hit the record button. Oh, welcome to our first uh, energy group session um, together. My name is Katie Glasgow and I've got Jen over here with me. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves a little bit. I'm actually going to unmute her too. Let's see. Oh no, you're unmuted. Are you unmuted, Jen? I should be unmuted. Okay. Can you hear me you're, okay? Yep, you're unmuted. So, um, all right. So welcome to our winter solstice group energy call. Um, this is really exciting. Jen and I have been talking about this for um, ever, I think. <laughs> and so this week we were actually on the phone earlier and I'm like, hey, let's do something on the winter solstice and get everybody ready for the holiday season. Um, I see a lot of uh, people in the Modain area where just, they're just kind of like flowing with life, walking around like zombies and it's Christmas and we shouldn't be walking around like that. So our goal today is to bring you some more awareness and help you use the energy of the winter solstice to clear a lot of your stuff that you no longer need to carry around. So how it's going to work is Jen and I are both going to share some of our knowledge. Um, and if you have questions, if you're on Facebook, um, and you're seeing this on Facebook, go ahead and type them into the chat. We'll connect through Facebook, the Facebook pro portal. If you're on the webinar, go ahead and type any questions or comments you have or anything that you feel is coming up. Go ahead and actually type those into the chat so we can get you um, through all of that. Um, one of the things, if you're brand new to energy, I'll say a little bit about energy and I'll let Jen say she's been doing energy work longer than I have. She's been one of my beautiful teachers in this beautiful journey to help me realize some of my crazy or well I used to think it was crazy now I don't think it's crazy it's fun um, <laughs> but um, so when we're doing this what it's gonna look like is Jen and I have a lot of intuition it's gifts that God has given us we can feel other people's feelings we know where you guys are holding on to pain um, and how I look at it is that God gave us the ability to kind of go in and dig around where you guys might not know you have stuff that is holding you back in maybe your business your life your marriage with your kids whatever that looks like to not live life fully and so we can kind of go around and poke around inside and help you clear that stuff and so um, from time to time we may use oils Jen and I may be doing some snapping we might be doing some pulling we might look a little crazy but that's just us feeling all the feels and feeling where you guys have some stuff trapped and allowing it to come to the surface allowing um, what no longer serves you to come from the subconscious level into the conscious level so that you can have that awareness and then do something about it and move forward in your life. So um, I know that is kind of scaring a lot of you that are on. I can feel it right here. We might have to do some stuff before we even get started. That's okay. You're in the right space. This is our, um, we know we want everybody to just have a merry, merry Christmas. We, um, like I said, this is the holly jolly Christmas time. We're not supposed to be having a bah humbug Christmas time. We're supposed to be having a beautiful season. Um, it's the birth of Christ is coming to us and we want to celebrate that and we want to rejoice in that. So um, if you have some stuff coming up that's maybe come up during the holidays, like, like I said, pop it into the questions. Um, we've got some topics that we want to cover, um, but we want to hear from you because this really is truly your call. And another thing, another side note, I just want to mention to everybody is if you're listening to this recording, that's okay. You can receive just as much as everybody on this call. So I'm going to pop it over to Jen to see if she has any other things to add to it. So Jen. Yay. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I like the way that you put that. We have the tools to dig around. I always like to say that my clients, the people you here on the call, you are doing the work with God and Katie. Being here are, are here to like guide you. We're seeing your blind spots and you know, to clear and what needs to go. And it's my favorite time. If I'm freezing up, my connection's a little unstable. Um, it's my favorite time to dig deep. And I'll talk a little bit at the same time about the winter solstice. Do you mind, Katie? Just to kind of brief everybody. No, yes, no. This is, and this is Jen is like so good at winter solstice and moons and all of this stuff. So mm -hmm. she's going to, oh, she's like our little goddess of the moons. So um, she's gonna, yes, please talk about this so that people understand what it, what's going on today specific, in, in particular. Okay. Yeah, I know. I was raised a little differently. We were like, very religious and in a very strict religion, but my great grandma was a native American and my grandma was like very mystic. And so we were raised with like moon and stars and all this different knowledge. So it's kind of like my 
favorite thing to bring in to awareness, but the winter solstice, right? God designed us to move with our planet and nature's rhythms. We all do it. Animals do it. We do it. We're supposed to be connected. And when we're inside our houses and when we're disconnected, we feel it in our body. So the winter solstice, um, that sounds like a funny name, but it's simply put, it's the longest night of the year. And the reason is, is because the axis with the North Pole is tilted as it moves around the sun and it's at its furthest point. So it's tilted completely away from the sun and the tip, the North Pole and like the whole cap of our earth is in the darkness for much longer than normal. So I always like to tell people on the solstice to imagine your body like the earth and you're tilted so that you can, so your crown chakra is all the way in your darkness. <laughs> and that's why people are freaking out because their head and their crown chakra is all the way in the darkness and they're terrified, right? And scared people freak out. And so that's why none of you are going to freak out because you're not going to be scared because you know that there's nothing in the darkness other than your own mind and God. So there's nothing there to hurt you. So the best part of the winter solstice is it gives us that nice long night to examine our darkness, what's in there that we don't want to look at and what's in there that's creating resistance all throughout our life that's holding us back. And so um, that's what the winter solstice is. And it's named that, oddly enough, after a Latin word that means sun standing still because while we're all in the dark, the Tropic of Capricorn, you know, like south, it's all in the light and in the sky, it looks like the sun stands still, quits moving and then moves backwards, right? So in their realm, it looks like an illusion that the whole world's shifting. So imagine what that was like to not have science and to see that happen, right? So we're lots of shifts. Solstice is a great time to shift and become the better version of yourself to really let go of the things that are lurking and not let it turn you into like monster overwhelm person. So that's my favorite reason to do something like this on the solstice. This is the day to create change. And then what we do is all throughout human history, we've celebrated the return of the light. So lots of bonfires, right? Like welcome the light back in, urge the light back in. It's a big theme. So tonight and into tomorrow, it's all about being a light worker, bringing all that magical light back into your life without resistance. So that's what I hope to do today. That's what we're going to do. I love that. I, you know, I was reading a book, um, Big Magic. It's a great book if you have not mm -hmm. read it. Um, but she explains this thing called fear, right? That we all try to hide fear. We try to push it away. And I feel like darkness can be the same thing. We all try to like not acknowledge darkness, right? Not acknowledge like any thoughts or like things that are, we try to stuff it all back down in or like get rid of it completely. When the reality is, is fear and darkness and all of these things, they're part of the beauty, right? We always have to have a yin and a yang. We have to have the lightness, the balances, the darkness, and we always have to have both of these entities with us. And so um, maybe start to shift your thinking right now on this call of when we start to talk about darkness, like Jen said, it's not a bad thing, right? It's here and it's part of us and to understand it and acknowledge it and release it, we have to just be okay with it. Like, Hey, I used to try to like, Jen knows this. I used to be like, Hey, darkness, stay away from me. I don't want to have anything. I don't want to have these dark thoughts or anything like that. But the reality was I had to understand those so I could help people even more. And I could bring, I could be this light worker that I'm in, I'm supposed to be with God because I, I had to understand it. And so um, just bringing that to the surface and allowing it to surface. Stop trying to stuff everything down. Stop trying to say it's okay. Stop trying to put the face on because that's not living in your truth. And so just this awareness and bringing it up to the light and then allowing us to use this energy and to have a wonderful holiday season. So what are, what are you feeling lately, um, Jen? Like what are some things that you feel like some of these shifts, like as we've led up to this day, what are some things that have been happening with people? I know I've had a lot of people um, bronchial issues. Mm -hmm. um, and bronchial oh, yeah. issues, you guys usually come from suppressed family stuff. 
<laughs> says the woman getting over a cough. Yeah. With yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been yeah. getting over a cough too. Yeah. I last week. So what comes up during mm -hmm. the holidays, you guys, is a lot of family yeah. stuff. Um, so I've noticed a lot of bronchial, everything going on. I've noticed a lot of ear stuff too. Um, so what else have you noticed in people? Headaches? A, a lot of head tension, right? right. Here, which has changed. Tons of headaches, tons of heart palpitations, and not always actually heart palpitations. This is something that during the winter solstice <clears throat> and big energy shifts, so just a little bit of moon knowledge, we're in the middle of a trilogy of supermoons, right? Um, we had no supermoons in 2017, and then we're having three right in a row, and the third one's a blue moon because it's there will be two full moons in one month. So that's like a big deal. There won't be another supermoon until February 2019. So when we're in a big energy shift like this, you're going to feel it because the it's almost like God is like, wake up and take action. And if we're not letting go of our, the things that are holding us back, we're getting dragged. That let go or be dragged, that's like right now. So I'm seeing a lot of resistance in that way. I just explain it to somebody that if like imagine like a tsunami coming and you trying to hold on to a pole to stay where you are in your comfort zone. So you're holding on to this pole while the entire ocean is trying to push you in a direction. That's why you're feeling that tension in that body, all those feelings. Cause you're like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. And like the energy is just forcing you. So that's what I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of tense shoulders, neck, headaches, stomach aches, all of that like resistance, you know? Um, I keep hearing people say that their stomach drops constantly or that they just have rushes of adrenaline and thymus activation, right? So our thymus is like right here in our chest in between our collarbones. Woo. And, and as you wake up to your spiritual purpose, your thymus will wake up with you. And so you'll feel a lot of uh, whooshing in this area in between your collarbone. So yes, fuzzy eyesight, Jenny, yep, the ears. You know, the left and the right, those have different purposes. So that's very, <laughs> you can get very into like diving into what that means. You know, um, Katie, do you use the Heal Your Body, Heal Your Life book much? Um, not a whole lot. Um... I don't, but yeah, but this is a wonderful book if you guys want to know yeah. where things are coming from. This is a really great way to kind of get at some of the things that might be. Your body's always talking to you, so that book helps you listen if you're, if you're maybe cut off a little bit from the intuitive reasons behind it, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I always think when my ears are ringing and my ears are feeling itchy, um, it's usually because I, I have messages from my angels or from God that I don't want to hear or I'm blocking um, and they're there to help me. We have to remember we're always divinely supported. The universe supports us in all ways at all times, um, which goes into another thing we're going to talk about on this call is receiving, right? And we don't want to receive the message. So also allowing yourself to receive your messages, right? Taking some time for prayer, for meditation, and to just really be like, hey, like what, am, what messages am I supposed to be receiving today um, that maybe I'm just, I'm not listening to, you know, maybe you're, you're seeking answers for something and you've been asking so many questions, but you're really not listening to the answers. And so if it's for something like that, if you use essential oils, which I think a lot of people on this call do, and if you don't, you should, um, <laughs> is heliochrism right there on the ear. It's amazing. Heliochrism is this amazing um, oil to heal our wounds. And so just allowing ourselves to hear and to feel that. Yeah, and I always think it's interesting when things like Melaleuca and Helichrysum are good for healing the ear congestion or ear pain, right? Mm -hmm. But then they're also really good at um, cutting us free from toxic energies and healing old emotional wounds, mm -hmm. right? So it's not a coincidence that they work mm -hmm. <laughs> for the symptoms of those exact things. So I'm also feeling... Um, you know, and 
anybody who's friends with me on Facebook knows that I experienced this in my real life also. But in sharing my experience, I've seen that other people are having the exact same experience where people are being literally verbally attacked out in the world, right? Like people are losing their minds, road rage, parking rage, shopping rage, all the things. And remembering that that is an unhealed portion of that person feeling all of the things you're hearing us talk about and not understanding it. So feeling all these generational patterns in their family, feeling the pressure, so much compare and contrast energy this season, more than I've ever felt any other Christmas. I mean, that's when I came down with my cold. We went to my daughter's recital. I'm in the basement with all these moms with their with their kids out on stage being judged <laughs> for being perfect or not, right? And it was like everybody's hearts were just like on edge. And so we have to remember that that's how, where everyone in the world is at right now and try to become an observer of it and not a circus performer, <laughs> right? We want to observe the circus. <laughs> we don't want to join it. So that's part of why this session is was so important to us because – it's kind of easy to jump into that ring, you know. Mm -hmm. when yeah, it's so, so easy. So um, I think what we're going to do now, so now we're understanding the energy. One of the things I feel like I need to say is um, if you, we might recommend some oils, right? Because like I said, I know many of you use oils. There may be some oils that you use. If you don't have them, don't worry. Okay. Um, to receive our energy, don't, don't block us. If you're on this call, I can feel most of you are like, Hey, I'm really excited for what's going on. I'm ready to receive what you're about to, to offer us. Um, just take a deep breath. Let's just all take like a great big giant clearing breath. And then we're going to use some black pepper and melaleuca. Um, I've already used lemongrass on everybody. So, um, but we're going to use some melaleuca and some black pepper. So just take a big deep breath and just allow yourself to just feel yourself surrender and to trust, to trust right now that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. You saw the message that we were having this call. You showed up on this call. You popped in because you saw it on Facebook or you saw somebody else talking about it and trust that you have been led to us for a very special reason and that we are here to offer the gifts that we have to help you enjoy the rest of the holiday season. So open yourself up to receive and just surrender and be in this moment with us as we get ready to, again, bring this stuff to the surface. Because I find what a lot of us, what we're, we're carrying around, we don't even realize it's there right? We have no clue. And so if we can just bring two or three things to the surface or one thing to the surface right now, that's my goal for you. And we're going to talk through some different concepts. We're going to talk about the art of receiving, right? The not comparing ourselves to others um, and just different things like that. And so just everybody take this mm, big clearing breath. When I take my breaths, um, and I teach people a lot of this when I'm, when I'm coaching, is I do a three count breath and I breathe in for three slow counts and then I breathe out. And when I breathe in, I pull in the ancient energy of the earth, right? All of the wisdom that the earth has for us, the roots, just like think of a tree, a tree is like rooted down into the ground and you are too. And so I pull in that beautiful energy and then pull through my entire body. And then on the three breaths out, I'm going to release it out in to the universe, right? I'm going to, and you know, a lot of you, I've, I, somebody said on here, I'm so glad you're talking about God. It's hard for me sometimes with energy and stuff. Yes. God made everything. So when I use universe, guess what? God made the universe. <laughs> a lot of people get weirded out by universe. <laughs> um, and I'm like, guess who I made it? Um, all the so, words, God all, made them all, all the things. He made them all. <laughs> he, made all. <laughs> he made all the planets. He made everything. And so as you breathe out, just release it to him. And then as you breathe in again, breathe in and pull in the energy of the moon and the stars and everything in the planets that we're experiencing right now and breathe it out through your feet. So you're just this conduit. Imagine yourself as this beautiful conduit of light. So let's all breathe in together. One, two, three. One more time through the feet. Yeah, 
Now we're going to turn around and I'm going to have you breathe it in from the, from the, from the stars. Now that was some magic shit right there, you guys. That was so good. You guys did awesome. You guys are all relaxed and ready now. Whoa. <sighs> they did so. I thought I was going to have to get my sage, and I did not. Um. <laughs> that was a lot of birth energy. I don't know if anyone realized that, but if you have birth trauma in your timeline, that the clearing, I don't know if you felt that. I was like, whoo. I was like seeing all these like, Baby, born, good. Yeah, we may have used a little bit of the galaxies in that one. Um, okay, so the other, I'm going to talk about two different oils right now. So Melaleuca is a wonderful cleansing oil, okay? And so right now there's a lot of stuff coming to the surface, all this stuff that, we, that no longer needs to serve us, this darkness and all this stuff. And so Melaleuca is paired with black pepper. These are probably two of my favorite oils to cleanse and bring to the surface. It's like the black pepper just helps us bring to the surface the habits or the patterns or the realizations of the habits or the patterns, right? So I know, I don't know, it was probably six months or a year ago, I started to realize when I would get nervous or so I would start to get stressed and I started to get too much of my head space versus my heart space, I would want to eat. I wouldn't be hungry, I'd just want to eat. And I had to notice that that was a pattern I was doing, what was triggering me to want to snack, right? And so that black pepper can really help to bring this stuff to the surface. And so black pepper is definitely one to have in your supply closet, if you do not. But putting it right here on the crown, will start to kind of bring to the surface, and then we can cleanse out some of ourselves with melaleuca. So if you have melaleuca, I've already put some lemongrass on the heart space, so if you have some lemongrass and you want to continue to do that, go ahead. Um, but you should be, you're all feeling pretty good with that. And then put some um, melaleuca on your forearms. Is there any other oils that you like for them to use to kind of clear up some of the clutter? Oh yeah, I well, lemongrass and melaleuca are my two big ones. Um, the only other one that I really like, I like eucalyptus because it carries the vibration that all is well. Mm -hmm. So it's like the default setting. So I always like when I'm doing the clearing and the cutting, to infuse everything with eucalyptus because it just reminds us that we were already healed. We're returning to our default settings. So mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorite ones and always on the temples. I'm always yeah. loving the eucalyptus. Oh. On the temples. Eucalyptus with lemon, you guys on the temples is just okay. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's like you can have orgasms with your oils every single mm -hmm. day and none of us really realize this, right? Mental ones too. Like I said last night, I did a protocol on my husband and I after the Costco thing. And then when I put the eucalyptus on the top of my head, I was like, mm, do you feel that? And he was like, not like that. But <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, mm, funny. Because I did. That's my favorite. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so somebody said that they are soaking in the bath lots of oils. Third is burning. I just used Melissa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oil of light. <sighs> yep. yeah. yeah, Melissa is another one. It's kind of from that lemon balm family, like the, um, the lemongrass. Um, and Mel or Melissa, I actually use that a lot too. Um, I feel like Melissa can really get down into that cellular DNA, right? Like that cellular, like along with the DDR prime, it's a really great one to get down into the cell level because our cells hold our energy, right? Our cells are what hold all this stuff. And when we carry all this stuff around, that's where major health issues can be happening. I mean, I work with so many people now that are just like, it's not one thing with their health. It's multiple things. And that's because it becomes like your body becomes this breeding ground for all the for all the stuff. And so if we can get down on that cellular level with oils like Melaleuca or um, the, the Melissa and the DDR prime, it's just, it just helps us shed even more. Yeah. And I always like to think about it. Most humans that aren't doing energy work or get receiving it are in this space of reactivity with their environments. So if anger, if angry situations happen, they become angry sad situations, we become sad. 
you know, we have this reactivity with our environments. The ideal state is to be um, a vessel of light and healing and Melissa that for me. And so there, the affirmation with that is like my cells are full of love and light. Melissa infuses that love and light so that when sad things happen, my cells can transform the sadness into healing. My cells can transform the anger into prayer. My cells can transform what's happening in my environment into a healing experience. And that's the true state of us as humans. And that's why we are social creatures because we need each other to wash us clean, not react and feed into it. Sometimes, you know, I'll tell my husband something, he'll get mad. I'm like, oh, that's not what I need. I'm calling Katie, right? So <laughs> that was not what I needed just now. <laughs> so I needed somebody to reflect peace back at me, not jump in the hole, right? Yeah. So remember that your cells are love and light. And Melissa's really good at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so good. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is boundaries. Mm, yeah. So we're going to, yeah. So during the holiday season, I want you guys to think like, just get out a piece of paper. Okay. And a lot of you are down to crunch time and you've got like three days till Christmas and, or maybe you've been feeling this the entire holiday season. Maybe it's just today. I mean, we really have another 10 days left of December. Um, what on your to-do list will bring you joy? Okay. What will bring you joy? What do you still have left on your to-do list that you don't have to actually do? Okay. So you get to choose what you do. And I feel like with boundaries, a lot of us do what we think we're supposed to do, not what we want ourselves to do. So um, I'm going to give you guys an example. and. This is a very personal one. So I'm the oldest of five and all my siblings are going home for Christmas and I'm not. I'm going on Tuesday, right? So I'm still going home. I'm still going to see everybody. But that was a boundary that I put on. And the reason I put it on, and don't worry if my mom's watching this, she totally understands, right? She totally understands and she respects and honors my decision because many of you know her. Um, but it was a really hard decision for me, but at the same time, I wanted my family together, just my family at home on Christmas. I wanted my little, my, my, my children to be with me. I wanted to experience the joy of Christmas with them, you know, the lighting up with the presents and, you know, what we've gotten them, you know, picked out. And I just wanted it to be relaxing. I wanted to stay in my Christmas pajamas the entire day with a glass, my mimosa always full. <laughs> and I wanted it to be peace. Like that is what my heart was desiring. And to actually have that happen, I had to say, no, I'm not traveling three hours. I'm not loading my kids in the car. I'm not adding, putting all their presents in the car. And it's not that I don't love my siblings, right? But I had to say no, because this is what I wanted for my family. And that was a boundary that I didn't do last year. And guess what happened? I was sick <laughs> almost all of Christmas. And it wasn't that I don't love my siblings. It was just chaos, right? Because there's five of us with like spouses now and kids and dogs. And it was just too much. It wasn't what I wanted for Christmas. And so I had to put that boundary up. And when we put these boundaries up, it's not that we don't love the people in our lives that we have to put the boundaries up, but it's just saying like, Hey, this year I'm not going to participate in that and we're going to make it work or I just can't make it. I was listening to something on the radio the other day about um, us feeling like if we get invited to holiday parties and thinking that, Hey, I got to go hit five parties in one night, but none of them bring you joy, but you have so much guilt. Like where is that guilt coming from that you can't tell somebody no? Like, and, and then we go into all these long excuses when we have to tell people that, Hey, I'm not going to, you know what you can say, you get to choose your joy. Okay. So I give you permission and I know Jen gives you permission right now to say, I'm going to choose joy for the last 10 days all over in my life. Right. But for the last 10 days of 2018, if I can't get anything through to you on this call it's to choose joy with what you're doing for the holidays. And you don't have to give people a long list of excuses. You don't have to pretend that you're sick or that the baby's sick or you can't find a babysitter. All you have to say is 
it's not going to work for us to come. We'll have to catch you next time, right? Because the more you go into why you can't be there and don't let other people's guilt play a role on your decision because you get to choose. You get to choose. And everyone will live. <laughs> That's the thing Everybody that I live. want to remind people. Like when you, when you make someone sad or you don't, like they invite you somewhere and you say no, like they're going to be fine. They're going to get to the party and everyone else will be there. And they probably won't even think of you maybe one or two times, you know, <laughs> it's true. You know, like it's just the world goes on. Right. And yeah. Um, my mom raised us with this hilarious saying, as far as jobs, she would always tell us, never stay at a job that makes you miserable. Never. And she was a single mom of three children. And she still had this motto. She said, she used to say, I was looking for a job when I found this one. I won't stay anywhere where I'm miserable. Right. And so we have to stay into that. Like the world goes on, everything moves forward. We're not going to stay stuck. There's always something else. We found this situation, right? Right. Our friends are going to have other people with them. We can stay home. Our families will be okay. Mm -hmm. They can make you a plate and pretend you're there, right? They'll move on. They need to move on. That's their boundary issue, not yours. <laughs> so you have to just remember everyone will survive with your lack of presence. Yes. They will. Yeah. Everybody will be fine. Everybody will handle it. And then, you know, the other thing too, maybe, um, you know, this is something I implemented a couple of years ago. It got to be too much for our family to stay with family sometimes, right? Because there was five of us now, we have little kids, maybe we were trying to stay somewhere where it wasn't kid friendly or something like that. And we started, so that was also part of a boundary is yes, we went, mm -hmm. but we stay at a hotel now, right? Not at my parents, but at my husband's parents. And it's worked out wonderfully because his parents are older and they, you know, they're not used to having a one and a half year old or a two year old in their house, like crazy train, right? And three rowdy boys. And so we can still go, we can still enjoy lots and lots of time with them. But this was my boundary. Hey, this is, we're going to just stay here right down the street. We're still going to see you. But then I had my own space so that I had my, you know, I could recharge and had the pool there for the kids to swim in and and all that good stuff. So boundaries don't mean like, hey, hard line not going to come. It just means that we're going to work. And a lot of that ties into where your, what your core values are, you know, like talk to your husband about it. What do you guys want as your family? And, and you know, and parents have to understand that you have your family now too, right? Um, boundaries might be as simple as, hey, I don't have to do cook Christmas baking just because my mom and my grandma always did it right? If it's one more thing added to my list, I don't have to do it. Um, I don't have, maybe I don't have to send Christmas cards, right? Um, I actually sent them for the first time in three years <laughs> this year. But last year, it was something that I, I didn't do because I didn't need to do it. So what other boundaries are you seeing coming up? Well, I'm laughing because I, Every single energy client I've had for the past two weeks has had some sort of this dilemma come up where they're like, well, I couldn't do that. That'd break my mom's heart. And I'd say, hey, well, I think your mom needs some personal development then, but that's really not why you make decisions as an adult, right? Like, and we have had this happen a, bu a bunch of times over the past couple of years because we don't, we don't stay with friends when we travel, right? So we have an RV. We're very used to our own in environment. We just kind of always made it a thing that we don't stay with friends. Um, and so it's a constant boundary thing where I'm like, it's not you, I swear. I love you and your house. It's all fantastic, but I love hotels more. And I like my private time and I like hotel bathrooms, tubs, big deep tubs, right? That's my favorite. Um, but a lot of things that I see coming up right now in particular is breaking of traditions and um, being stuck in old patterns because it's something that's always been done. That's a huge, huge thing I'm seeing right now. And the interesting thing is, not to get too astrology up in here, but you know, we have some stuff happening. Saturn's moving into Capricorn. We're like getting ready to work, okay? So no matter what you're doing, whether you're a stay-at-home mom whether you are an outside of the home mom, whether you're in network marketing, whether you are, you know, whatever you do, 
it's going to be time to pour passion there, right? And to work and to go after it. This is what's being supported in our universe. And so we're all feeling it. And the thing is, it's going to take new energy. And the solstice is like, right, it's all about birthing this new energy, this light. And if we're not ready to break tradition and create our own, we're going to feel it. And we're going to feel like we're betraying people. And we're going to feel like we need to stay small because it makes other people more comfortable. Right? Like, I'm just going to stay. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't need it. You know, I'm just not going to. It's not that big of a deal. That's what I hear all the time. It's not that big of a deal. Right? I'm okay. It's fine. I'm not going to die. Right? But Elizabeth Gilbert, I love that you brought up Big Magic. I saw her live at a workshop. Her partner, her life partner is from Detroit. So she comes here a lot. She had like a three and a half hour workshop. She said, people always tell you that if you start to say no and you start to have boundaries that people will respect you more. She's like, those people are liars. <laughs> they will get mad. People will want to break your new boundaries. They don't like being told no. People who have always benefited from your acquiescence are going to be a little upset when you stop doing what they want you to do. So you just, you just keep doing you and from love, right? We're not like be mean to people, but making sure that you're making decisions that are best for everyone in everyone's highest good, right? I love you. I'm going to be there. I'm going to sleep in a hotel bed. Mm -hmm. It's a good compromise. And if you get pissed, I'm sorry, but this so is, it's, it's either this or I'm not going to see you. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is true. Like boundaries are something we have to continually be working with. And so for some oil ideas for that pedigree, combined with neroli right now is really, really beautiful for boundaries. And you can actually rub those on like your solar plexus, your, your neck, use it for your, um, like your perfume. Mm -hmm. Um, you're okay. So if you guys don't know, I'll stand up. I am dressed from the waist down. Jen may not be, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your solar plexus right here right? Basically from the middle of your boobs down to your belly button, that can be considered your solar plexus area. And that is what houses your divine goddess. Okay. That is what is like, oh, it's like where all your life force comes from. And that's where it's like the, that's where the roar comes from, right? That's where your love and your protection. So it's really important that that's where we actually put the boundaries and the protection on ourselves because that is where you need to push it from, right? Like that is where you're needing to like, oh, let's do a big exhale on that. Whoa, oh, hmm. just a minute guys. <laughs> Jen, wanna help me on this one before? Yeah. So, oh, okay, so that's where we need to put the oils. And so yeah. that's like our divine, mm. and so she's gonna help you and I'm gonna pull it out. So a big thing and the reason Katie is feeling it so strongly is that let's clarify that when you put up boundaries, you aren't blocking love. You're not blocking good communication. You're not blocking people who have your highest intentions at heart and that maybe are coming at it from an unknowing place, right? When we put up boundaries, we're blocking things that are harmful to our spirit, that cause shame, that cause discomfort, that cause anger that are not good for us, not in our highest good, and that are in fact coming from a place in the other person that is unhealed. And so creating um, an increase in the unhealed energy. So when we talk about boundaries, we are not talking about cutting out, right? Ever. We're talking about filtering through. Proper boundaries mean that I can walk into a sea of low vibration and I am whole right? So we're creating this beautiful space where you are unafraid and anything can happen and it doesn't mean a huge setback. So um, take a deeper breath and allow these boundaries to go up. The resistance to them is very strong in this group. I think that there's quite a few situations where maybe you feel so completely bound to people that if you put up boundaries, they'll be mad at you or you'll be in trouble or you'll be ashamed, or they'll feel neglected, and you'll be, you'll have abandoned them, right? Like these, that's the kind of energy that's coming up when we keep talking about boundaries. So if you're feeling a little nauseous, dizzy, right? It's because you're resisting this increase in boundaries because some of it serves you, right? And so remember, 
if something is setting you up to feel like a savior, it's just as much a problem in, on your end as others. And so I see a lot of people send out their solar plexus energy to try to fix everybody, to know what's up with everybody so they can try to control everything. Um, and so that's something that you want to definitely step away from. A deep breath. Oh, yeah. So what we're going to do right now is what I've been doing is I've been kind of trying to pull. I'm creating. I'm helping you guys create shields. I call it a shield. Um, you guys, this is so easy. My 10-year-old can do it. If you, my 10-year-old can do it, you can do it. Um, but it's really just um, imagining that we have the Harry Potter magic cloak around ourselves or we have like a shield, like we're in like a clear shield dome again, so that the people we want to come into our space can come into our space, but we don't have to let anybody like other people into our space. And, um, and so right now I'm feeling a lot of like, you guys are all trying to carry all of your weights, like right here on your shoulders. Um, that it's, is, um, it's like all hanging out like right here right here across your, your um, thoracic spine area. Um, you guys are all just like carrying the weight of the world around on your shoulders. And that's, I think boundaries is probably the biggest thing for Christmas. If you can't get anything on this, it's like, you don't have to carry the weight of the world. That's why Jesus Christ is born on Christmas day is because he came to carry the weight of the world for us and we don't have to. And so, um, I just put some winter green on and that winter green is the oil of surrender. If you love, if you like yoga, some pigeon poses to help surrender some, um, frog poses. That's my favorite. Actually, I know a lot of people don't like that one, but those are really great. Just, we need to surrender. Just everybody take a big breath and just, And once we surrender, then I can help you create your shields. And remember that when you try to force heal somebody or when you try to control somebody else's experience in the world, you're actually holding them back from their personal growth opportunities. That sometimes a pain point is exactly what someone needs to grow and in if you are avoiding letting anyone feel a pain point you're stunting like you have to focus on you and what's inside your bubble right that's the only place you have true powers in your actions and reactions and you have to let other people experience their pain points you have to let other people move through the world with their free will and god's intention and they have to work and co-create with God to manifest their life. You can't manifest for other people, right? As much as I would love it if that were true and I could run the world, like I, <laughs> things would be so cool, right? There would be like unicorns, it'd be wild, but we can't do that. So we have to stay inside these boundaries and work on ourselves. It's always an us thing. Everything we feel is an us. And if you're really mad at somebody else and you want to fix it in them, I forget what book I just read this in about um, meditation and mindfulness, but anytime you're like, they need Jesus, you need Jesus. Every time you're like, oh, they need to learn how, you need to learn how, right? So every time you have that need to fix something, you need it. It's you. It's you. Take it internally. And... To add on to this, ladies, because I'm feeling this a lot, and I've noticed it in some of the comments, um, is that this includes your husband and your children. <laughs> you have to disconnect from them. And a lot of times, I work with a lot of clients that it's usually their kids or their husband that they are blaming everything on. Or like, oh, if only my husband would be on board with me, I could build the doTERRA business. If only my husband, there was something in the comments, if only my husband was on board of the boundaries, I could put up the boundaries, right? That's their shit. That's not yours. And you have to let them go go and, and do their own thing. They have to do their own work. And you know what happens? The faster you can release them, and that you can take that to a soul level and allow them to do their own healing, 
the faster they'll actually heal, right? It's like, think if, if, if you guys are moms on this call, you couldn't, you couldn't walk behind your child forever, right? The moment you let go of the bike is when they actually ride the bike, right? The moment you stop chasing them around is the moment they start to run, okay? Like we all have to do things on our own so we can't keep going to this savior mentality, right? I'm going to save my child. I'm going to save my, my husband. I'm going to, it doesn't work like that. They have to, they're on their own journey. So you're, you can still be on the same path. You're just kind of running ahead or behind, right? And that's been a huge lesson for me. Yeah. I feel like Jared knew I was going to talk about him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, I'm no, going to talk it's- about you. So true. When I first started, I know Jared, Katie's talking about you. Um, just talking about you because I tried to beat Jared over the head with personal development. I wanted him. So I, I did all the things. And then I'm like, you, I had a book list of like 32 books. I had all this stuff that worked for me. You need to do this. You need to do that. I was like his in-home Tony Robbins coach that he never asked for. Right. Um, so imagine if somebody just showed up and started coaching you, that was me and my husband. And I was just really angry that he wasn't doing it because he'd be so much better if he just did it. And then, um, one day he left to go to the store and got a flat tire and it was pretty bad. So we had to take it into the dealership. We have a, a Volvo and we have like lifetime tires. So they just replace it for free. Um, so we had to take it up to the Volvo dealership and I'm like, Oh yeah, great. Right, great. He ended up having this like life changing moment listening to something that was in the CD player, became a completely different person in like an hour and a half. And I'm like, oh, apparently God knows how to do things better than I do. You have to let go and stop trying to heal everybody in your life. And yeah, including your kids, which is the hardest when we made them. So (laughs) we feel like we fix them. And it doesn't work that way either. <sighs> okay, so we only have a few minutes left of our call today because we were going to go for an hour. Um, and the last thing, the last two things, I just want to bring this up real quick, like maybe five minutes, Jen, on each of these topics, the receiving and the comparison. I'll talk about receiving if you want to talk about comparison. Deal. How does that work? Okay. So we're going to talk five minutes about this. Okay. Um, Cause I feel like boundaries, a lot of other stuff goes away. The faster you can learn boundaries or not the faster, the more you understand the concept of boundaries and you really start to implement those in your life. Um, that it can happen that we don't have to do everything for everybody. Um, but what I also find during this time of the year is that we get into this mode of, oh, I have to find the perfect gift. I have to, and then it's going to be the, what Jen talks about in comparison. But why, why are we doing that? And why are we disappointed with what we get and things like that? And some of that is because we're blocking our ability to receive. Okay. And so even though we want a gift, we don't know how to actually receive that gift. Right. Because to unleash and to unblock the heart space, we have to release control, okay? So to receive, we can't control because we can't control what we receive, right? And this is, again, where some of the disappointment comes from during the holidays is because we don't really know how to receive things in our life. So the one thing I just want to say about that is be aware. Are you receiving the joy of the holiday season? Are you receiving the love around you? Are you receiving the guidance of the angels? Are you receiving Christ into your heart? Are you receiving all of the things, right? Or are you blocking them because you're so afraid you're going to get hurt, right? Because maybe there was some time in your past that you got hurt this life or another life or whenever it was, but you, you were hurt. And so instead of getting hurt again, you just put a big wall up. And so allow yourself to take down that wall. Um, 
again, the, the, the rose touch is really good for that heliochrism. If you don't have heliochrism, just correct X on your heart to help heal the wounds of your heart. And then using geranium and wild orange are really my two favorite oils to kind of open up heart space is they're just really beautiful. Immortelle. Um, those are all just some ideas for you. Just rub them over your heart and then just sit in some prayer for a little while and do that breathing exercise that I talked about at the beginning of the call where we're pulling in the energy from the earth and, and, and just allow yourself, open yourself up to see yourself sitting like this big giant sponge of light. And you're allowing yourself to receive all the gifts that are out there for you, right? You're allowing yourself to receive the abundance you're allowing yourself and when you receive thank the person that you received it from right think like even if it's you know an ornament from your child or if it is somebody at the store that says Merry Christmas or just tell them stop and say thank you so much I received that right it can be as simple as that thank you so much I receive that gift you gave me because a gift doesn't have to be a package. A gift can be, you know, spending time with somebody or it can be a text message or it can be whatever that looks like, but just allow yourselves to receive this holiday season and be a little bit more aware of that. Now, and this is, that was just a little tidbit on this because a lot of the concepts Jen and I are actually talking about, this is like, this is stuff we're gonna, we dive into when we do personal coaching and group coaching with people, but this is just tidbits for you to start to have this awareness again. So Jen, while you're doing that, I'm gonna actually pull the stuff out of their back side of their hearts. <laughs> Good, yes, <laughs> there might be some more for you to pull after I'm done, no. Um, yeah, and you always have to, re you always have to remember to do in the world like when we're grateful for things. What we do is between us and our God. What someone does with your gift is between them and theirs and vice versa. So always just stay connected on your end of that and be, you can always be grateful. Um, when I talk about comparison, I feel like comparison is one of the viruses of the human race, right? It is the thing that keeps us in a state of opposition when we look at other people's lives and we pretend to know what's going on, we are always, anytime you compare yourself to somebody else, you're comparing the equivalent of your very first mile to somebody else's six marathon. We have no idea. We have no idea just because we think we know, we don't know what they're struggling with. And one thing I see is that people will compare anything at any stage that they're at. So someone may sit in judgment of somebody and feel like, well, I'm calm and I'm in this state, right? And they're a mess or I'm a mess and they're calm. We have no idea what we're working on cosmically or karmically or internally and energetically. Someone may be looking like a hot mess at the grocery store, but they could be clearing 32,000 blocks from a past life, right? You have no idea. <laughs> we just don't know what someone's going through what their journey is or why they're a mess. And so we keep our eyes in our own lane because we are the only thing that matter to us. And so we can't judge our journey against other people's journey. When we do that, it robs us of the opportunity to take gratitude, just like Katie was saying. So when we're comparing something that we have or when we're comparing our bodies to somebody else or when we're comparing our hair or our makeup or our houses or our car or how much stuff we have in our cart at the grocery store or how many toys somebody gets on Christmas or what somebody else told their kids about Christmas or any not looking at our own lives and what that creates is this moment where you're not at all gratitude for what you do have because the truth is there's always going to be someone better than you and there's always going to be someone that wishes they had your life. There's always both sides of that. And so the only true thing that we can do is make sure that we're in our own moment. Uh, one of my friends once told me, if, you're ever, if you ever find yourself unhappy, it's because you're in another moment or you're in someone else's life. You're not focused on your own life. Because if you're in the moment in your own life, there's always something to be grateful for because you're alive. 
and because you're handling it and you're surviving, right? And if you do find yourself in your moment in a crisis, we're never comparing when we're in a crisis, right? When there's a true emergency crisis happening in your life, your eyes on the prize, you're focused. You're not comparison. You're not comparing in that moment. That's something we do in grief or it's something we do after the fact, but in the moment we know to focus because that's the only way we can be effective. And so if you're worrying about other people's lives, then there's nothing that you need to do other than focus back on your own life. And so it is a big deal to stop comparing. It is a big deal because it cuts you free from the idea that you can ever be better than you are right now. And that is the truest of the true. You only have this moment when nothing else is ever guaranteed. And so if you can't accept who you are in this moment, then you don't need to compare yourself to anybody else's moment. You just need to figure out why you are so discontent with your current life. And that will tell you a lot about the unhealed portions of yourself and the pain points that come up will tell you, right? So if you're always comparing your body to other people's bodies, you have trauma that you need to clear and any thoughts in the, in the moment need to be on clearing your self-worth. You are redeemed and you are worthy at every size shape, right? Every single state of being, you are perfect because you are exactly as you were made and you are the current manifestation of your life experiences. So when you can look at your life experiences and how they have molded you and how each of your cells has shifted in line with your DNA, if you are not what you wish you were, you are focusing on an ideal that's impossible for you because you have survived an entire life thus far, right? And so your DNA is replicating all of the experiences that you have into physical manifestations. And the way to heal that is to heal it and not to ignore it or to make it feel like a failure. That th Those aren't failures. You are the way you are because you survived and you won. So own that, be grateful for that, and then work on clearing out all the junk that makes you feel unworthy. So comparison, nix it. You'll be a whole different person, whole different person. Comparison is the thief of joy. Absolutely. Right? And you know, I have to say before, before we stop, when Katie and I decided to do this call, I said, the thing I love the most about working with Katie and doing things with Katie is that there's never any ego or comparison. You'd never feel it come off of Katie. And it's one of my very favorite things because it's rare to find that. And I always tell people, I don't judge. Like, I don't have judgment. I really don't. That's not a place. I have funny judgment, like I'm silly. I can be judgy in a silly, funny way, but in my heart, it's not like a thing. And that's the thing that Katie, I identify so much with her. When we do fun things like this, it's just like we're both here. And so thank you for creating that space. I love doing things with you like this. You're welcome. Oh, you guys are, oh, you guys just had some massive shifts right there. Like there was some massive, massive stuff. So as we wrap up this call, a couple of things. I want you guys all, if you guys were on, you need to drink a lot of water the rest of the day. Use your oils. Take a big Epsom salt bath tonight. Spend some time in prayer and medita meditation. Do some yoga. I know if you're in an area where you don't have yoga, what's the yoga you're doing, Jen, that is like booty, booty yoga? B-U-T-I yoga. B-U-T-I yoga. Booty yoga. It is chakra activation and yoga. Amazing. So it's supposed to be amazing. So I'm going to be trying it soon. Um, so just, it's okay. Like we give you permission to stop all the nonsense of Christmas and just be for an hour today. Like we loved having you on this call. Um, we wish all of you a happy holiday season. This, this 2018 is a master year 11. There's a lot, it's going to be just juicy and so full of just love and light and Jen and I are ready to take it on with you. So if either one of, if anybody on this call, if you're interested in exploring coaching with either one of us, just message us. You've got, you can find us on Facebook or from the email or whatever. Um, we trust that you're going to find the right soul to work with you. So, um, but this is what our mission is. Our mission is big. And both of us have had huge transformations because we decided to work 
within this realm, right? We decided to do this work on ourselves so that we can now help you because there's too much of all the, all the stuff that we talked about on this call. It's not just during the holidays. There's too much of it going on all the time and it's time for that to change. And that's what 2018 is going to bring is a lot of change, a lot of boundaries, a lot of action and a lot of dreams being realized because it's life's too short to not live in your truth. And we're here to help you live in your truth. So do you have anything else to say, Jen, before we wrap it up? Besides drink, draw like lots of water, you guys. <laughs> Use your oils. Got, don't, don't worry about drink like all the water. Oil. Dr Girl, drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And I, you know what? Right. I think that the thing that I would like to say, yeah, no, mm -mm. just, just, just drink the water. And honestly, if you start to have this is my this is my only thing. If you start to have thoughts that come up seemingly out of nowhere, today is not the day to ignore them. Just write them down. Write them down and call an energy worker. Don't ignore anything today, right? This is your opportunity. So don't ignore it like, oh, that's just a weird random thought. No, it's not. Just write it down. Drink the water. Write down your thoughts. Sit in meditation. That would be my thing. Yes. Yes. So much much good stuff okay so love you all have a merry christmas yeah that's all so jen and i are going to be doing more of this i think during the first because this is really we did not rehearse this we just no. cut on and no script no script no all script right. well there was a script well and i am in my pajama pants so you know <laughs> I'm just all business from the top up and then my, yeah. That's so. the, that's the beauty of working from home in your office. You can do all your wild stuff and your crazy dancing and everything and you don't have to have a bra on or be dressed. So it's yep. awesome. oh, no bra, no bra. So. <laughs> all right. Everyone have a Merry Christmas. We love you all. Bye.